Welcome back to Real Estate 101. I'm your host, Joe Tresera. And today, we're going to continue our discussion on financial planning, specifically how to select a good financial planner. And I'm pleased to be joined once again by Jeffrey Gregory of Desjardins Financial. Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. So, Jeff, today I want to talk about uh, how do you select a good financial planner. So, what's the first step in, in selecting a good financial planner? You typically want to find somebody who has uh, some designations. They may have been um, uh, in the business a little bit. Just because they're new to the business doesn't necessarily mean that somebody doesn't know what they're doing. But I think uh, interviewing them and finding out the tools that they have in their hardware store is going to be very, very uh, essential. Uh, what's their financial hardware store look like and then can go from there. Okay, so what do you mean by financial hardware store? Uh, financial hardware store. Uh, walking into a Rona, walking into a Home Depot, they have tools and everything all over the place. And in uh, the financial hardware store, we have tons of tools, be it calculators and questionnaires and so forth. So the, the hardware store is kind of meant to give an idea of how to get uh, somebody to their goals. Uh, and help them achieve whatever they want using the tools that are available. Okay, so uh, talk a little bit about those tools and, and uh, you know, the tools that are available to help people get to where they want to go. There's a lot of tools. Uh, for, uh, out in the industry, they can find out from the internet and so forth, everything from calculators to questionnaires and so forth. Uh, what makes uh, a good financial planner for a lot of people is the, the types of tools they use and how they know how to use the tools, for example. Anyone can go into Rona and buy a hammer and a screwdriver, right. but doesn't necessarily mean that they should just because they bought that hammer and screwdriver build an, ex an addition to their house. You might want a carpenter, right. and the carpenter is designed to be a little more of a perfectionist within that. So everyone can start to use their own tools, but a, a carpenter in the financial world will use the tools more efficiently and ensure that every uh, project, be it the goals, be it retirement, being education planning achieves its uh, maximum opportunity. Okay. Now, are these tools available to everyone? They are. Um, I, I think everyone can see the tools in every, uh, every bank, every insurance company, every investment company does have some form of tools that they can use. But the tools that I like to use, um, such as uh, things, that, and I brought an example, a bit of this record-keeping booklet. Um, this tool is uh, very, very important for, for my clients and my prospects because when I was learning the business, I was told to use uh, two ears and one mouth and use them proportionally. Right. So the main tool that I like to use in my own practice is not something you can get off the internet. It's just the ability to listen. Through listening, then you can understand the person a lot better and make sure that uh, those goals can be, can be achieved. So probably to answer the question, the tools are available, but the real important tools you can't really get. Okay. So Jeff, tell me, what's in the booklet? The booklet is um, almost the intro for me to, to help uh, understand everyone and to help ensure that the present situations and the future situations are all being entailed. This booklet will eventually have almost everyone's personal information that they may need uh, between uh, the investments that they hold, insurances that they hold, budgetings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is the, the first tool in the toolbox I, uh, toolbox I use for everyone because without understanding the person, I can't help them achieve their goals. And any proper financial planner always realizes that the more you understand your client, the more efficient you're going to be as a, as a planner to help those people reach everything that they want to do, be it on the short term, be it in the long term, from home ownership to cottage ownership to retiring as a millionaire if they wish. Uh, the booklet is the first part, and everyone gets to, to keep their booklet, so okay. that's key. So uh, for viewers of our show that may be interested in a booklet, how, how can they get one? Well, there is a number down below uh, that has my name and phone number, and that's always a great start. Um, anyone can get a booklet, but filling it in without knowing how to fill it in, it's probably like a government form at that point. You just get lost. Right. But what I would suggest is taking about an hour uh, of someone's time and... 
uh, going through it. <clears throat> and it's not for everyone. This booklet is not for everyone because what I've come across in my experience is more people spend more time planning their vacation than they do planning about their financial future. Absolutely. If you are more interested in taking those few moments in your life to plan out the next 20, 25, 30, 50, 60 years, because all that money, you want to keep the government out of it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it starts with an hour. And if you can't devote an hour to it, then don't take the booklet. The booklet is useless. All right. So Jeff, for today's final question, uh, for viewers of our show, uh, you know, that love everything you're saying, but fear uh, calling or working with a financial planner, what would you say to them? There's a couple things. One, uh, the first one that always come up and I get asked always in my first meeting, how much is this gonna cost? <laughs> um, the only thing it costs is your time, maybe a cup of coffee. If you have desserts, I'm a big dessert fan. But that's pretty much the only cost a lot of, a lot of times. If there is, through discussions and, and tools that are needed to achieve those goals, then using my services to help do that, a lot of times there's no cost. But if there is costing and expenses and so forth, be up, very upfront about it. So <clears throat> realize that there is no, nothing upfront uh, for stuff like that. The second part that I uh, suggest for everyone to be worried about is your situation is not dire straits. A lot of people think that uh, I'm not going to go to a financial planner because they're not going to be able to assist me or my, si my situation is, is way too, too bad that I'm not going to waste that person's time. There's no such thing. Uh, everybody's time and everyone's situation is very unique and can be resolved with proper planning. Not saying it could be resolved tomorrow, but it can be resolved over time. And that's what I think uh, a true financial planner for an individual does, is they really want to help people achieve that goal. My biggest reward in my business is not me helping that person get to where they want to be. It's when they have no problem telling a friend and family member, you need to go talk to Jeff because he's a great guy. Man, does he know what he does. That is exactly what your financial planner should be to you. Right. Somebody who you could pass off in a heartbeat. And if you're not feeling that's the service you get, then it's time to interview other planners at that point. And it's not them showing how smart they are to you. It's supposed to be the individual interviewing the planner because that is now their business partner for the next many years of their lives. So there you have it. Now you know how to choose a good financial planner. If you're serious about taking care of your financial future, get in contact with Jeffrey Gregory of Desjardins Financial. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Joe Tercera, and we'll see you next time.